What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and today we're going to be talking about tips you can use for on-camera flash. So there's lots of things that you can see, you'll see people do from time to time. They'll maybe mount the flash like a bracket or something off to the side and, and use a trigger or some sort of an extension cable to um, kind of change the plane of where the flash is. But we're going to be talking strictly about how to get good results from a flash that is on your hot shoe. Sometimes you're running around running a gun in, you don't have the option of having, or you just don't wanna buy a bracket or finagle some sort of situation to where you can get the, the location of your on-camera flash um, to a different place. So we're gonna be, once again, speaking strictly from the flash being right there on top of your camera. So we have, um, we're gonna, we're gonna do it a couple different ways. I'm gonna show you kind of what it is that people hate about on-camera flash in the first place. And usually that's just the fact that it's a little contrasty. The difference between the background and the, uh, or, or the ambient light and your flash is pretty drastic. So it can cause a lot of contrast and it can make your flash seem more flashy. That's what, the idea behind a flashy flash is, is the fact that you can see it as pronounced in the shot. So if you, what we're gonna do is bring up that ambient light and show you that you can start to blend that on-camera flash a little bit more with the ambient light. Then we're going to modify the A1. So I've got a couple of modifiers. We might just mess around with uh, one or two. And then I'm just gonna show you uh, other things like bouncing it into things uh, just to get different looks. So if you don't really use on-camera flash, Maybe this isn't for you, but maybe you want to hang around. Maybe you'll learn some cool stuff if you're thinking about getting something like this and you don't know much about it. But we're going to have fun regardless. Take some cool pictures. So let me see if uh, my restream chat is working. I'm having some issues. Caitlin's probably going to have to read off uh, what's happening because for some reason I'm not getting... I'm just seeing a lot and, of highs and hellos. Oh, lots of highs and hellos. Hey, everybody. Hello. Uh, my chat is acting wonky. So hopefully something will start coming through here in a minute. In the meantime we are going to do some photographizing. So I'm using, just so you know, uh, we're going into Capture One Pro uh, 20. I'm not on 21, I'm not fancy, like you fancy people with your 21s. Um, but we're shooting with a Fuji X-T3, it's my camera. It's a camera I always shoot with whenever we're doing these things, so I'm sure you've heard me say it a million times, but if you're new, welcome, I use Fuji. So it's a Fuji X-T3, on top of it, I'm using the Profoto A10 for Fuji, so the TTLF version uh, on top, uh, using a 1655 lens. And for this first shot, I'm pretty sure I'm usually at my standard. So F8, uh, we're gonna go to 1 250th of a second because I know that's where I'm gonna wanna be. I'm gonna lock that into place and I'm gonna put my ISO at 160 because I know that that's where I want that to be. So cool, we're in place with the settings. So the first shot that we're gonna take, we're just going to leave it at F8 two fiftieth of a second. I actually want to see what my background looks like in my exposure preview. Cool. So you can see my exposure preview is dark. So we should get some sort of an idea between like a flashy flash shot and kind of a, a lower ambient light. So, but I have, I'm going to have the A10 set to just flat TTL and we're just going to let it rip. So, and see what it does right out of the bucket, not modified. Um, I'm probably going to point, oh, someone said hi to you. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, I'm probably going to point, I'm going to zoom the flash in a little bit tighter just so it's a little more pointed. Uh, and then I can also show you what it looks like when it's expanded out. Uh, you can manually control that just by spinning the ring on the front or inside your menu settings, or you can just go to uh, automatic and let it follow along with your lens. So cool. So I'm going to have Caitlin come in here. So you can say hi to Caitlin like there also. So I'm going to have Caitlin come in and we're going to start firing off some shots and see what this stuff looks like. So. You ready to go, Katie? Yes. Cool. Sweet. Do we want to pull up the... Um, I sure can. Yeah, let's okay. pull up the shot to the... I want this to be... Oh, I can't breathe. Sweet. And on. Oh, there we go. Hopefully, hopefully you're all having a wonderful day. Um, cool. Oh, you, you, have, oh, it, you, have, you it. have it tiny. We're going to flip it. Okay. So yeah. I'm tiny and... <laughs> And the actual I mean, shot is great, big. But we can make you tiny. Yeah, I need to be tiny. Make me, make me bigger. Yeah. Okay. So bigger on the screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So cool. So hopefully you're all having an awesome day. We are, uh, there we are just rocking and rolling and ripping and letting this stuff go. So here we go. 
So I'm on a tripod. I'm just gonna kind of keep it on tripod. That way I can talk to you and I'm not worried about like flailing my camera around or um, dropping it or anything like that. So these techniques for the most part are gonna work best in a landscape mode, just because once you start to kick your um, flash over into portrait mode, I'm gonna lock this into place because I feel like that's gonna be an issue if I don't do that. So once you start to kick your camera, oh, this is awesome, I'm doing, I'm doing a great job. <laughs> Once you start to kick your camera over into portrait mode, what you're gonna find is that your side, the light's coming from the side, and that's okay, but what can happen is, is you, honestly, you want this light to be a little bit higher, like if you're coming from the side, you'd want it to be, I'm not even really doing a good job of showing you this, uh, you'd want it to be more like up here to the side and not kinda like in the, on the plane with the lens. So, we're gonna go back to landscape mode after I unlock my Tripod ball, there we go, perfect. So my background is dark, so it should be for this shot um, pretty dramatic as far as the, the flash look goes. So here we go, three, two, oh, I didn't even wait for it. So, um, so right off the jump, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. It's definitely one of those things where you have to decide kind of like what look that it is you're going for. This is pretty good. Um, the, let me see if I can, let me do a zoomed out shot right here and see if I can kind of start, you know, come away from the background a little bit. This might actually be what I need to do. So come this way, Caitlin. So come to that, that middle mark right there, perfect. So I kind of want the, the background to fall off and then take a step backwards. Perfect, there we go. So you can see a little bit that the background's darker. So there's a little more contrast here uh, with the background. Granted, I'm still kind of pointed out, so, um, and, and we're relatively close to the background, so you can still see it. But the thing that people don't generally like is this. So like you can see this shadow right here is a little more, con uh, a little darker, a little darker here. So what we can do to mitigate that a little bit and kind of make it feel a little more natural and a little like just kind of kiss into the shot I'm gonna do a couple of different steps. I know where I'm going with this, so just bear with me. Um, but what we do is I'm just gonna flip my camera into live view mode. Um, I know that it's really, really tiny, so you probably can't. Actually, let me, let me, just, let me just do this really fast. Yeah, screen one. So I just want you to see this really quick, if you can. Come on, grab focus. So my screen's dark right here. It's looking at the exposure of everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my shutter speed to bring that back up to where I have a little bit more fill light right here. So it's not exactly the, the right exposure that I want for this. So let me turn this off and I'll take a shot and uh, put it up on the screen so you can see. But I just wanted to show you this so how I'm gonna decide what my fill light looks like. So I'm gonna just cut back, perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, let me turn the flash head off so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is what it looks like right here. Come back here, Caitlin. So here is no flash. Right? So a little underexposed, but some stuff is filled in a little bit more. So now let's kick the flash head back on. And this is, once again, just letting TTL do its thing, let it ride, and bring that back in. So what we've done here is we've started to bring up these shadows here. So it's starting to feel a lot less flashy. So you can see there's not as much contrast here between the shadows. So it's starting to even out a little bit more. And that's what you can do to make sure that it doesn't feel too flashy. The next thing that you can do, especially if you're still kind of living in that TTL world, let's see if I bring my shutter speed back a little bit. So I could go, I'm gonna slow my shutter down just a touch more. There we go. Take it to about 13th of a second. Um, so what I'm gonna do is in my TTL mode, I'm actually gonna turn my flash exposure compensation down about you know, seven tenths of a stop. So here we go, Caitlin. Three, two, one. So the nice thing here is the flash powers come down a lot, right? So the flash powers come down a lot. So it's definitely not as punchy into the flash department, but what it does is it's gonna still keep, oh, I totally missed focus, that's awesome. Let's do one more where I don't miss focus. <laughs> so I can actually show them what I'm looking at. So there we go. Right oh, I forget which one. Just come, it's the second, it's the Sorry. second one. There we go, right there. Three, two, one. 
There we go. I'm pretty sure I got focused that time. So cool. So, but what you're still getting is this pop in the eye. Also, you know what some of this probably is, is probably just a little bit of motion blur just because I'm running so slow. So, uh, on my shutter speed, but you still get kind of that sparkle in the eye. Once again, your contrast is much lower here. So, it's gonna start to feel a lot more natural. And then if you start blending this like with outside or like a room, you can start throwing on some gels to kind of match some tungsten lights. And that way it's gonna really start to feel a little more, um, a little more subtle. So if that's the route that you're going for, then the thing that you need to remember is you just wanna slow your shutter speed down or bring your ISO up in a way that's gonna get that ambient light looking the way that you want. So the difference between your ambient and your flash is relatively low and that's going to give you a, a little more subtle on camera flash look than you would get by just kind of setting your camera to what you want and just letting it rip so or yeah just kind of doing it the old-fashioned way where you just speed your camera up really really fast and letting it fly so now that I've, we've talked about kind of like how to get your on camera flash to blend a little bit more with the ambient we're going to talk about it modified so well, for this shot, I'm actually going to break out this thing. I haven't, I haven't talked about this thing in a long time. I've always called this the um, the baby bonnet. It kind of looks like a baby bonnet, right? Mm -hmm. I see it. I see it. Right there, a little baby bonnet action. Hi there. Um, I've always called it a bonnet, but this is the Profoto Soft Balance. And the cool thing about it is it's going to be indirect. Oh, look, the magnet works really good. It's got a battery on the bottom. Um, <laughs> so. It's magnetized, but what it's gonna do, it's gonna flip the flash head up and it's going to actually uh, be more of an indirect flash. This kinda has a beauty dish feel to it, um, but the nice thing is it's gonna elevate the light a little bit more. Because it's one of the things that people really, actually it's gonna be a little bit harder to see with this because Caitlin's wearing a turtleneck. But one of the things that people don't generally tend to like about on-camera flash, let's go to this one right here. Oh, and by the way, just so we can see the difference. I just go to my go to my computer screen real fast. I want to actually want to show them something before I go to soft bounce. What I didn't do was a side by side. So if you're going for let's blow this up. If you're going for that flash look, which is a really really nice look, you can eat, you can go that route. I I honestly kind of like this on camera flash really direct look. Um, and you can blend this. You could keep the power high. So if we would have kept the power high with the blended background, let's go here. So you can keep the power high, which still looks really, really nice. It's, it's once again, because that background's starting to balance out, uh, it looks really, really good. But if you need to bring that flash down a little bit more just to kind of decrease the contrast between the two, you can just lower it right here. So just so you see that. But what I was talking about before I got back onto this tangent was what the soft bounce is gonna do. It's going to, oh, you know what? I've gotta find one where I can find the little shadow on her neck because that's the thing that, all right, you can see it a little bit. Maybe it's fine. You can kind of see it right here, right here on her, uh, her jawline, right between the hair. There's a thin little shadow that appears kind of like, um, you can flip back to me real fast. Um, there's a thin little shadow that appears kind of like right here, and it's one of those telltale signs of an on-camera flash. It's just like this pencil thin little shadow up underneath the neck. So what the soft bounce is gonna do, is it's going to take that light source and move it up. So with it up a little bit higher, it's gonna change the, um, the distance of that shadow. And what that's gonna allow for is, once again, something that looks really, really nice, it's very indirect. The thing you have to remember is there's power lost in bouncing into this thing. So um, where we were at, I I'm pretty sure we were at a power level of like six-ish, ish, six -ish seven-ish when we were shooting here, and I'm gonna try to keep it in the same spot, we're gonna see what kind of power loss, uh, what kind of, how much power we're gonna have to use to go to the soft mount. So just clicks on like that. You can aim it kind of however you wanna aim it. I'm gonna kind of point it down just a little bit. So, all right, I'm ready for you, Caitlin. Hold on a second, I've got to trade Oh, you know what? I also need to go over there and see if your comment thing is working, because I don't believe that mine is. Uh, we just have lots of hellos. Hey, sir, it's Angel from Houston, Canada. Oh, what's up, Angel? What's up, brother? Good to hear from you, man. Hope, hope everything's good in Houston. So cool. So once again, soft mounts on the top. You can, the other cool thing about the soft mounts too is 
same thing, like if you wanted to use something like this in a room uh, later in the evening with some tungsten light, it's also magnetized on the inside. So if you wanted to throw a gel or if you wanted to put the dome diffuser in there, you could easily just kind of pop that into place and you still have the ability to do that right here. So well, I can show you that in just a second too once we're not on the screen. So what we're gonna do is I'm not gonna worry about blending because at this point I want you to see the flash. So we're gonna go back to 250th of a second of my, on my shutter speed. You need me to like pull my turtleneck away from my neck? No, no, you're fine. You're totally fine. You're totally fine. So we're gonna go back to 250th of a second on my shutter speed. We're gonna stay at the ISO of uh, um, 160 and we're staying at F8. So here we go. Let's back here so I can focus on you. So three, two, one. So here we go. So let's compare the two full power equal setting shots. So what you can see is that here with the direct, you obviously have the shadow much closer to um, like the nose, uh, right there at the lip line. The shadow is much tighter. You can see right there that little, the little pinpoint of a shadow right there between the hand and the chin. Whereas you start to come over here to the soft bounce, you start exaggerating out, it starts turning into more of a loop light, which is very, very cool. Um, the telltale loop right there that you see underneath the nose that the shadow makes, that's why it's called loop light. So really, really pretty stuff. Gorgeous catch light still, so you still have a little sparkle in the eye from the catch light, but it's a really, really pretty modifier. It does a, it does a really great job, and that's with nothing else on the inside of it, that's no dome. You could take uh, the opaque dome and kick a little more light forward if you wanted to. Um, that way, uh, it, it's gonna give you a little bit more sharpness in some of the shadows, but still be filled in really, really nicely, which we could do. Why not, right? We're here, we're live. So, just throw a dome on the inside. We'll take the same shot. And just so you know, so we can talk power-wise, um, we jumped up, oh, to full power. So at F8, 250th of a second, uh, with the soft bounce, um, and Caitlin's probably, what are you, five, six feet from the camera? Yeah. Yeah, she's about five or six feet from the camera, we're at full power. So this one might actually, this next shot might actually be a touch underexposed, just because we're already at full power and that dome diffuser is gonna take a little bit of the juice out. It's right here, Caitlin. So three, two, one, excellent. So we can see with and without dome, but yeah, you can already see that it's a little more underexposed just because it, it took some juice from it. So let's see here, compare these two. So like I said, a little more underexposed from this shot right here, but you start getting back a, a little bit, you still have the loop, which is nice, but it kicks a little bit more light forward, which is also kind of cool. So it's got a little bit of the, of the sparkle of uh, the hard light and some of the detail on the skin, but still softer than it would be direct. And then the other bonus is the fact that you now have the light source a little bit higher, so it starts to get into that real flattering loop light look. Then, the final thing that you can do, really, really simple stuff, I'm gonna be using a uh, reflector that I can move in and out just because my I don't necessarily have uh, a wall right close to me. But you know what, I could also try to bounce it off my ceiling. The only thing that worries me about bouncing off the ceiling is I have like other lights here and they might actually suck up some of the, um, suck up some of the, the light because they're wrapped in black. Um, so we can see. So we'll try bouncing it off this reflector. I'm essentially doing it with a reflector because one, you can do it with a reflector if you want to, if you just need something easy to make the lights off or a wall. You know, obviously a wall, a ceiling, something like that. So I'm just gonna boost this bad boy up. And so this is also where you can start to get into your, uh, you could flip your camera more into portrait mode because the cool thing from here is you're gonna be able to take the flash and point it right where you want it. And this is gonna become your light source now. And then another little cool trick that I like to do that my buddy Cliff makes fun of me all the time is I like to take the bounce card and what I'll do is I'll actually take it apart and I'll flip it inside out. So now on the inside of the bounce card is the backside of the bounce card where it's black and I'll use that as a flag. So what I can do is put this on my flash head. I'm gonna turn it this way and then I can flag this. So now I don't have to worry about any of this, depending on how I want to point this flash to hit that, hit this, um, 
wall and bounce off of it, I can keep some of that extra spill from hitting Kate. And the cool thing about this is this comes in your A-series flash setup. And it's once again, you just take it apart and you put the black side to the inside, so which is kind of cool. So I've made a flag out of it as opposed to um, using it as a bounce guard. Uh, whenever you see Cliff Hausner again, whenever we're allowed to see human beings in per uh, person, um, tell him that this is an awesome idea and that he can, you know, eat it. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Cliff. Sure. Uh, because we're bouncing also, we're gonna, we may play with the settings a little bit, but we're gonna see kind of where we're at with the settings uh, pre-bounced versus post-bounce. So, I'm gonna come in right here, Caitlin. Uh, yeah, we had you up. Did we have you? We had you at this right one. Here. Do you want me yeah, come back, back right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back right there. Cool. And so just a wall right there. Easy stuff. And then I think I actually moved in a little bit closer. So, so here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. So it's probably a little more shadowy than I'd like. It's definitely, I would, I would kind of want the light to come from this direction. So I'm going to move my wall. Which obviously, in the world of walls, you're not just going to go walk around moving walls, but you can move your body closer to a wall. So I'm just going to take this right here. Let's get it's kind of creeping into the shot a little bit. So once again, I'm just going to flip my little flag over so it's not. And I'm also going to widen the zoom because I think that's probably going to help me out some here too. So utilize, what widening the zoom is going to do, it's going to utilize more of the reflector that it's hitting and it should light pretty well. So moving this way a little bit, Caitlin, right there. You want to try to get your subject closer to the wall if you can. There we go. Three, two, one. So cool. So it looked like I got a little bit of flare kicking back across, but still really, really pretty stuff. And then you can just control that with positioning of the flash and whatnot. So. Let's see what happens if we go right here. But easy stuff, right here. Three, two, one. Cool. I think the uh, what's happening is my background is flaring and it's pretty close to Caitlin. So, ha yeah, you can see you can see it showing up on the. Uh, it's actually getting past the thing and hitting the background. I think that's what's going on. Oh yeah, I think that's what's happening. It sees the background. Let's try one. I'm going to try to point. This is why this little flag thing is kind of cool. So I'm going to try to point that and up a little bit more. So we go three, two, one. There we go. So what was happening is the light was skipping. There was like a little cut of light right between my little uh, bounce card flag and this. And so it was hitting the background and that's what was making that, that rough stuff. So let's bring this in. <laughs> let's move this out of the way. Got it. Yeah, I got it. Just for the record, rolling stands, best thing on earth. Best thing on earth. So, has anyone asked anything? Did anyone want to see anything? Like I said, my, my little chat feature over here is acting wonky. You haven't thought about using a bounce card like that. Nice idea. Yeah, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty slick setup. And like I said, it works really, really well. You can see in this shot here, we were able to, for the most part, keep that extra light. I could probably position it a little bit better to get rid of this uh, little cut. And what you're seeing is, you're seeing the direct light hit uh, this little tab right here for my reflector. And then it's obviously casting its shadow there. So let's. John Faison says, "Howdy, hey." Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, brother. If you guys don't know who John Faison is, you should know him. He's a he's a solid dude. Um, J Faison, P H A Z O N at Instagram. He's a funny dude. Go follow him. Um, but yeah, really, really cool stuff because we were able to change the the positioning of where that flash was hitting and what became the flash source, we were actually able to get a whole different look. So something like this, we were able to get a nice short light setup, which short light, if you didn't know, is that you are lighting the short side of the face, whereas the shadow side is facing towards the camera. So this is the shadow side based off of where we position the light. So but we were able to get a nice short light from our on-camera flash. So you could easily take your on-camera flash and get a lot of different looks out of it just with some basic things. So once, you know, first and foremost, the bounce card came with the flash and you could probably, you know what I should do? We should do one other shot. We should take the bounce card and put it on top of the camera and see if we get something similar to the soft bounce. We've and had a request also for maybe a handheld shot. 
Oh, like what do you mean a handheld shot? Oh, you want me to hold? You want me to hold the camera? Yeah, the only reason I the only reason I'm on a tripod is just because um, it's easy for me to not be on a holding my camera while we're talking about stuff as I move things around. But I can go handheld if you want me to. I think if you're just asking me to hold my camera, it shouldn't really change anything. Um, elaborate on it just a little bit for me while we're getting ready to do this shot with the bounce card versus the soft bounce. So cool. But yeah, if you could elaborate on me, I'd be more than happy to do it. It'd be super fun. So, you ready, Kate? Yeah, let me move it to the wide. Cool. So, once again, the cool thing about the going the bounce card route, and I change this around so my, my cool little flag isn't like that. The uh, cool thing about the bounce card is, once again, it's raising the level of the flash up. So, whereas normally you would be like right here with your flash. Your flash source is here. With the bounce card, your flash source is now here. So we should get a similar kind of loop light effect. We should also get the added benefit of this hitting the ceiling and flooding forward. Granted, I have a beam right up here that might, uh, oh yeah, good catch. I have a beam up here that might catch some of that light and, and fight me. So we'll just see what happens. Oh, cool. So, ready, Caitlin? So, places everyone. Here we go, three. Two, one. Cool. Still really, really pretty stuff. So relatively similar. Let's. Um, I love how you can see the window. In the yeah. Background. So the you sun's the, the sun's hitting just right. That is, it's coming through the window and and it's beautiful. It's it's like a gobo. It's like a perfect gobo. So let's go here and do a comparison of the two. Cool. So let me get this out of the way so hopefully we can see a little bit more there we go the color temp shifted a little bit that's obviously because the lights bouncing around the room now as opposed to um let's just zoom in tight on the face Kate's gonna kill me for this but you know whatever um I'll just be dead and you, get, you. And you guys won't see me again um so the cool thing is, is you're getting a nice, you're still getting that nice loop effect right here. You can see with this one, it's much more exaggerated. And this is going to be because when we, oh, I should probably move over here so you can actually see my face. So the reason that we're getting less contrast with the uh, bounce card is because, like I said, what's happening is the light shooting up, it's hitting the room. So we're kind of taking advantage of the thing that makes the, the, bounced off the wall thing really really cool we're getting the best of both worlds so we're getting the on-camera flash it's up a little bit higher awesome so that's going to give us the loop but because we're also blasting tons of light around the room what we're getting is a nice fill for the shadows so that's why you're looking here and you're seeing that this loop isn't nearly as contrasty as the loop from the soft bounce so that's what you're getting so the cool thing is right out of the box with just like an a a10 or an a1x you can get three real easy looks and, and four technically four looks if you start kind of bringing that ambient light uh, up a little bit more and the flash power down to blend them a little bit more that's four easy looks with a flash that's on top of your camera and that's what is that yeah that's direct direct blend with the ambient bounce card and bouncing it off the wall that's four looks with the stuff that's in the box and the advantages you're gonna have over something like this, uh, that you're gonna have with this over something like the bounce card is because the soft bounce is gathering all the light. It can gather it and push it forward. So it's a little bit more efficient. Whereas the bounce card, it's obviously, you're kicking a little bit more light forward with the actual card itself. And then you're also trying to take advantage of some of that light from overhead. So if you need to maintain some more power, this is kind of where the soft bounce really shines. Um, but just right out of the box, you can't beat that. So, um, did they elaborate on that thing that they were asking for handheld? You move, model moves, no sticks in the way. Oh, got, oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. You're talking about yeah. whenever we're talking. I'll just try to be cognizant enough to move my, my camera out of the way. I understand what you're saying now. My bad. But really, really simple stuff. Things that you can do with your flash on top of your camera, and that's not on a bracket, that's not using any TTL extension cords, that's not having to hook a Pro Photo Connect on the top to get the flash a little bit further away. Granted, the brackets and stuff, they have a lot of benefits just in the fact that you can flip to a 
portrait mode on your flash and main on your camera and maintain positioning of your flash. So that's where things like your brackets are going to start to shine. Um, but if you don't feel like rolling with the bracket, you're just trying to keep it scrappy. You can do a lot of stuff with just the things that you've got in your box. And then if you want to start tacking on things, you could always go the route of, if you really want to start focusing your light on something, um, you could throw a grid on there. I mean, we could take a shot real fast with the grid if you wanted to, um, just to kind of see what it looks like when we point the light out really, really hard. Um, but you can throw grids on there. You can gel it out and do some more fun, creative stuff with colors or just balance your ambient light. So the sky is the limit really. And you can have a lot of fun with this. Let's just throw a 10 degree grid on and take a shot just for funsies. Cool. Gotcha. We're going to go back to a direct shot, direct flash shot. I'm going to keep it. Um, you your computer up? Yeah, you can bring the computer up. People are, people probably want to see it. Mm -hmm. Going with a 10 degree grid just to really, really spot that thing out. I'm going to go handheld for you because you want handheld. So we're going to do it. I'm going to go handheld. Oh, this is so heavy. I don't want to have to pick this up. Cool. So we're handheld. Sticks are moved. I'm moved. She moved. We're moving. So come forward just a touch right there. Here we go. Three, two, one. Cool. And so here's a look with grids and that's actually that that shot actually came out really overexposed actually actually it's not really overexposed it looks nice so we can zoom out you can see it spotted out that's with a 10 degree here's a, a cool little trick if you will sandwich can you hold this for me see i did something nice for you and i got rid of my sticks and now caitlin is my sticks but now i have to yeah I'm now caitlin now caitlin is my sticks so what's cool <laughs> is you can actually stack these bad boys but what you want to do is you just want to make sure that the honeycombs line up just like that. So now I've got a 20 and a 10 degree on there and it should tighten that pattern up a little bit more. Here we go. Three, two, one. Yeah, even tighter on the pattern, which is cool. So really, really fun stuff. So you can do a lot. Look at you. I gotta put my camera on the floor. The things I do for you. All right, cool, we're good, we're good Caitlin. The things I do for you. So. Once again, lots of cool different things that you can get out of having your flash on top of your camera. It's just about learning how to modify it, how to do things subtly or how to exaggerate things. It really, it really is that simple. So let's just show you, boom, boom. Let's zoom out here, zoom out here, and then let's get one more direct flash shot right here, boom. So there you go. That's, that's three straight on direct flash shots. They look real. I mean, these two obviously look the, kind of the same because they're doing a lot of stuff of, of spotting out what you want, but you can do things like I said, stacking the grids on top of one another to get that beam angle even tighter, really, really cool stuff. So you can do a lot of fun stuff with your flash on top of your camera. So don't be afraid of it because it's not bad. It really comes down to knowing how you're going to light. People talk trash all the time about on camera flash. It can be really, really cool. You just have to play with it and find your style. So hopefully, does anybody have any other questions before we sign off of this thing? Nope. Sweet. Well, thank you all so much for kicking it with me. I love you so incredibly much. It means the world that you come in and just hang out with me and we talk flash photography and have fun. So if you have any suggestions about things that you wanna see in the future, shoot me a message, DM us. I'd love to cover any techniques, any things that you'd like to see. If you'd like to look at a specific piece of equipment, we can do that. Um, if you want to look at a lighting technique, we can do that. The sky's the limit, as long as it's pro photo related or lighting related. So hit us up there. If you have any questions about any of the stuff that we use today, you can check the link in the description up above or below, depending on where you're watching this. And it's got all the details you might want for uh, the products that we are using. And also, if you want a free academy course, uh, Dave Bichot, who is just a, a lighting monster, uh, he's such a good dude. He has a course called Distance, Direction, and Shape, and we're giving it away for free. So you can go and check in the description for that. So if you want to check out the products, or if you want to get that free course, go to the description, check it out. In the meantime, I hope you have an awesome weekend. Have an awesome week. We'll see you on Tuesday. If you have any, if you, if you don't know this already, every other Tuesday I do a, an Instagram live on the Pro Photo Global page, and what we do there is we kind of just take your questions about whatever. It's, it's pretty much an ask me anything. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask directly to me, 
jump on Instagram on Tuesdays at one o'clock and we'll be doing that. So next Tuesday, I'm live on Instagram and then we'll be back next Thursday for a Facebook, YouTube live extravaganza. So in the meantime, have an awesome week. See you in a few days. Peace out.